I want to tell you something about Walt. Walt is probably, well, he is definitely, but he's probably my very best friend in the ministry. I'll tell you what, me and Walt, we've been through, Pastor Harmon. Amen. Amen. You're, uh, you're talking about doing some ministry downtown. Amen. Amen. Well, this tent, amen, was Walt's before it was mine. Amen. And every year he rents it back from me. Glory to God. I think he done paid for it back. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. But he came downtown when we were first starting. And we put the tent up downtown. And we had revival downtown. And we learned more about casting out devils downtown. Amen. Give him a word, Walt. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord tonight? Yeah. Amen. Has he been good to you? Yeah. Amen. He's been better to me than I deserve, and I thank Him, praise Him for it. Amen. It's good to see all of you under the house tonight. Amen. I really like getting under the tent. I've always had a feel for tent ministry because it reminds me that this world is not my home. Amen. Amen. That was the reason for the, the festivals and the Feast of Booze and Tabernacle when they would get out of the house and go live in a tent to remember this world ain't your home. Amen. Some of us need to remember that. We're getting a little too homey here. Amen. We need to let go of some stuff over here and put some stuff up over there because where your heart is, amen, amen, that's where your treasure is. And so you need to lay out treasure over there. Amen. I, I really am glad to be here with Bishop Jackson tonight and, of course, Pastor Van Gore. Uh, you missed a miracle crusade this year, Pastor. Hallelujah. I tried to call you. It was it was something. Amen. As strong as it's ever been. Uh, Bishop Jackson was traveling with us and, and Brother Kim with him. Uh, during the Miracle Crusade, we've seen God do wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, uh, one man in particular I remember in Wilmington, North Carolina. I gave this revelation. I'll give you this quickly and then move out the way. But I gave this revelation. As soon as I gave it, he jumped up out of his seat. He come running down the center aisle and by the time he got there uh, brother Paul Roden was with us he had done dump about a half a quart of oil in my hand and I slapped him in the head with that oil oil went one way he went the other amen and and he laid there and, and shaking and all kinds of stuff and I just went on preaching and, and we was moving of course by then into the altar service and he got up. He, he About 10 minutes later, we were starting to pray for some other people. He got up. Well, I, I reached my hand back. Brother Paul dumped another quart of oil in my hand. Amen. And I slapped him on the head again. I mean, you got to be led by the Spirit. Listen, when you're doing stuff like that. Amen. And he went back down again. And about 20 minutes later, he got up. After we had done prayed for quite a number of folks, he got up. And he said, Pastor, i got to testify. He said, I had spurs, bone spurs growing on my feet, out the bottom of my feet, causing excruciating pain for years now. I haven't been able uh, to stand for long periods of time. I have to be careful how I walk, and I certainly couldn't run and jump. He said, but as soon as you gave me that word, I received that revelation, and God healed those bone spurs off of my feet. He was instantly healed. He began to run and jump. Amen. The Bible says they went leaping and running and praising God. And that's exactly what he did. Amen. Hallelujah. The revelation that I gave him that I want to give you tonight, now I believe it will make a difference and help you to get what you need from God and help you to receive the things that God is wanting desperately to get to you. Faith without works is dead being alone. And so I, I, I said, Lord, it takes faith to do the works of the Lord. Amen. It takes faith. The just shall live by faith. But Lord, I, I, I'm really trying to have as much faith as I can. I'm praying, trying to get rid of all doubt, all unbelief. There's, but there's an element, there's something missing. And I, I need to get it. I need you to help me get it. Because how many of you know my people, not the sinners, perish for lack of knowledge. What you don't know is killing you. I'm about to tell you something right now that when you know this, it will change everything about your life. If you understand what the woman with the issue of blood understood, she understood this. 
She had faith. She had heard about Jesus. She believed in Jesus. She had faith that He had the power that she could be made whole. But she said within herself, if I could just touch the hem of His garment. Come on. Now let me explain to you about the hem of the garment of the priesthood that Jesus wore. Amen. It was a long uh, uh, hem. It was a garment that would be draped over His neck and run down the fronts. And at the ends it would have tassels would be hanging. And when he would receive his anointing as priest, he would bow, they would pour that anointing onto that garment and it would run down that garment into the tassels. So the anointing was running through that garment as he walked that oil would slowly drip from those tassels as he went. The revelation that a woman with the issue of blood knew and understood that you need to know is that when your faith touches the anointing, the works of God are then manifest in the earth. What you need more than anything in your life is to get a hold of the anointing of God. What you need more than a bigger house, a better spouse, amen, a bigger car and a better job, you need to get into the anointing. If you ever get the anointing, friend, you will begin to manifest the work and the power of a risen Savior. You will begin to do the works of your Father in heaven. The works of God will begin to be manifest right through you because Jesus walked into the temple after the Holy Ghost came upon him. Walked into the temple after being in the wilderness for 40 days. What, what will being alone with God praying and fasting for 40 days do for you? It will get you into His presence and it will begin to fill you with His anointing. The way to get the anointing of God is to get into the presence of God. In His presence is fullness. Everything you need in the, in the presence of God. Jesus walks into the temple, pulls up the scroll, steps up, opens the Scripture, and picks a place and reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because... The anointing never comes without purpose. The anointing never comes without destiny. If you want to know who you really are, get in this anointing tonight. The anointing of the Lord is in this place tonight. The same anointing that was in that miracle crusade is in this house tonight. It's moving through these men of God that are standing in unity. Amen. That God has anointed. Reach out. Touch him of his garment. Receive your miracle tonight. Let your faith touch the anointing of God and get what you came for. Amen. Hallelujah.